Good morning. I'm glad you're able to devote some time to worship this day, and we do have some announcements to begin with. The uh, board and I have been looking at what is the best way to handle uh, Easter coming up here. Uh, what we have decided is that we will continue to be inside in worship, 10 a.m., with masks, and we have our UV lights installed into our HVAC systems as the way we will continue to worship up until Easter. Uh, the week of Easter, we have Monday, Thursday, which is the Thursday before Easter, and we are going to gather outside for a meal. A year ago, we had uh, a meal together, and it was a corned beef, cabbage, and potatoes, so sort of an Irish meal. And so we're going to have that again, and we'll have some other stuff for people who don't like corned beef, which still confuses me because corned beef is amazing. But uh, that will be outside, and if it rains, we'll obviously go inside. But our plan is to be outside 6 o'clock the Thursday before Easter for a meal. Uh, Good Friday, the Friday before Easter, we'll be in this room. Six o'clock for a brief service, marking Good Friday. Then on Easter itself, we looked at what is going to be the best way to be able to invite as many people as we can to celebrate Easter with us and to do so safely. And knowing that there's a lot of variables there, what we thought was we're going to invite everyone to worship together outside. And we're going to do so at 11 a.m., because at the beginning of uh, April, it could be a touch cold. So we're going to give ourselves one more hour of the day to warm up. So 11 a.m. outside on Easter in our parking lot is the plan. And if it rains, of course, we'll come inside, put on our masks, come inside. But uh, we're hoping we'll be able to uh, celebrate Easter outside this year. So uh, that is, uh, I think, the only things we need to announce today. And so the reading this day comes from Genesis 17. When Abram was 99, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am God Almighty. Walk before me and be blameless, and I will make my covenant between me and you, and will make you exceedingly numerous. Then Abram fell on his face, and God said to him, As for me, this is my covenant with you. You shall be the ancestor of a multitude of nations. No longer shall your name be Abram, but your name shall be Abraham, for I have made you the ancestor of a multitude of nations. I will make you exceedingly fruitful, and I will make nations of you, and kings shall come from you. I will establish my covenant between me and you and your offspring after you throughout their generations for an everlasting covenant to be God to you and to your offspring after you. And I will give to you, to your offspring after you, the land where you are now an alien, all the land of Canaan for a perpetual holding, for I will be their God. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. You probably noticed that there was a unexpected cut in the video. Uh, I finished up taping the sermon and then went home and made uh, dinner for the family, and we just watched a movie together. The Rescuers, the 1982 Disney classic, held up uh, rather well. I was impressed. But it kept on running through my mind that I needed to I tighten up this sermon, make sure it's as clean as I, it can be, because it, 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 um, it, looking at the life of Abram matters. And I also want to make sure to be able to take the day off tomorrow and spend some time with my family. So I'm going to uh, drop this in, uh, what I'm doing right now. And so please uh, forgive the, uh, the sudden change in uh, background. Abram was called. He was called to go, go from your land, go from your family land, leave your family's house, and, and go to a a land that I, the Lord, will show you, and I will make your name great. I will bless those who bless you. I will curse those who curse you, and you're going to have this land. And by extension, those who follow you, your, your family members. And so in, in this call, which first happens, it's in Genesis 12, uh, Abram takes on something new. He's going to become a traveler. He's going to take on a journey. In a time when taking long journeys was not all that common, he's invited to do something that really no one, no one else is, that he would have known is doing. And, and so he takes this journey. He, he goes, he leaves with his um, 
family with Sarai, his uh, nephew, Lot, and they head out. And I'm guessing that when they get to the land, the land that God has promised to them, he probably has a sense of, okay, done. I've done this. I'm good. I was asked to do something, and now it is done. And then we keep on reading. And we come to things like it's in Genesis 15. Years pass, and uh, Abram again has this interaction with God, this vision. And uh, he, he has this promise that you will have a great family. You will have be the father of many nations. And uh, Abram responds and says, not sure how that's going to happen. I don't have any kids. And God directs him to look up to the sky. And as he looks up to the sky, he is told, your descendants will be as vast as the, scars, the stars in the sky. Okay. And um, he gets another bit of knowledge in this moment, this second interaction. He finds out, uh, you're going to have to trust me, though. And that's what God tells him. You're going to have to trust me because your descendants not always going to be an easy walk. Your descendants are going to go through some times. They're going to be in slavery. It's going to be for a long time, but I will not forget them. I will bring them out of slavery and I will bring them to this land. And so now, uh, Abram, who has went to this uh, a land that is not his own, left his father's land, his father's house, has tra become a traveler and thought, I'm done, I've traveled, I've, I've done what I needed to do, to, now I'm ready to have kids and, and begin this next phase of my life. And, uh, well, he is told that now you got to start trusting. you got to learn to trust that, not just trust yourself, like for Abram to trust himself to God's plan, like go to a, for, go, go take a jaunt yourself, Abram, that's one thing. Now he's being told, you got to learn to trust that your descendants, you know, I will get them through as well, even when they have a rough time. And to trust uh, your children and your descendants, <laughs> that's, that's a bit of a challenge, right? So, uh, but that, that, again, Abram's probably thinking like, I'm, I'm ready now, right? I'm done. I fin I'm, I've learned to trust uh, and, and take this jaunt myself. I've traveled. I'm done. And then I've, I've learned to, to trust God with the descendants. I, I'm, I'm, I'm ready. Okay, you've told me I need to learn to trust. Okay, I'm ready. Ready for some kids. Here we go, All right? And the kids don't happen yet. And then we have a third moment that happens. And this is where we read today. It's in Genesis 17. And at this point, like, Abram's not getting any younger. When we start caught up, when we first meet Abram back in Genesis 12, dude, 75. Now he's pushing 100 years old. And though um, some of the ages in the first uh, books of the Bible I might take with a grain of salt, I mean, the long and short of it is, dude's not a young man anymore. And so uh, <clears throat> probably has a real sense of, can, can, can we get on with this? And uh, <clears throat> time to have a kid. And so one more time, Genesis 17, God shows up to Abram and says, you're going to have some children. And after 25 years of learning to, to travel, learning to trust, you have grown into the next step, right? You're ready for your name. And so uh, you're ready to leave behind Abram and to take up your new name, Abraham, which again is quite a challenge, right? He, Abram has already left behind his, his, the land that he grew up on. He has left behind any sort of delusions that everything is always going to work out. That trust, even in the middle of what, what he knows will be a interesting and hard times for his descendants. And now he's having to leave behind his, his name, Abram. He's now going to be Abraham, which means a father of many nations. And so he's, he's grown into this, right? And so now I'm, he's, he's done, right? He's kind of, well, now he's going to be a parent, right? And once you start being a parent, you're, you're not done. You, that's just when things start, right? There's a whole another set of things to learn and to figure out as you go. And, and I think it's great that um, Sarah, his wife, Sarai, it gets uh, her new name as well 
after uh, they, they've been traveling together like this has not been a solo activity Abram has traveled with his wife Sarai and they've gone through thick and thin together and now Sarai will become Sarah or princess so it's pretty clear like <laughs> Abraham don't forget you've got the, a princess by your side you're in this together both of you and then they have their child uh, Isaac and Isaac lives up to his name Isaac means laughter and there is much laughter and rejoicing at his birth. <clears throat> and, and so, like, Abram, in, in this following the story of Abram, we see uh, just this step after step. First, he, he learns the journey, and he thinks, ah, I'm done. I've figured out how to journey. And now you still have more to learn. He uh, he learns to, the kind of interacts with him again. Now you got to learn to trust that whatever is going to happen next, before you have kids, you got to trust that, What's going to happen with these kids is in God's hands, and sometimes it's going to be hard. Okay, I'm good. I got. I I, I can journey. I can trust. And okay, now you've grown into. Uh, now you can have a new name. You after 25 years, this third time God interacts, and now you can be a father of many many nations. And okay, now they have the child, and it, it takes a while before they they get what the thing that they've been journeying, traveling, and desiring this whole time. And, and they have this child. I, I do love the fact, this is kind of an aside, that um, in sc Scripture is written as, as the story of God and God's people. And God's people are, are people of a specific time and place. And so they can write what they can write using the words and the culture and the norms that they have. And, and so some of the norms and the cultures of, of the cultures and the scripture can be deeply problematic in there uh, and how uh, the equality of men and women is being equally made in the image of God can sometimes get obscured. And then you have moments like this where, like, it is very clear it is not just Abram. Abram gets a new name, Abraham, and Sarai does too, Sarah. They're both in this together, equal, equally made in the image of God. It's just a, a, it's a beautiful moment where that, that shines through. That, uh, that, that that's just, I, I love that. Okay, so Abram is one of the first of many people in Scripture that are works in progress. God works with these people and takes them where they are at, and 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 it leads them into what is next. And I'm sure all of them, at the time that God called them, they thought that they were done. They were ready. Like they're they're good. Like Amos, the prophet Amos, he is a farmer. Yes, he, uh, he doesn't need to change anything. He is good. good. He's got his land. He has nothing he needs to change. And then God calls him to go up north and become a prophet. And he was not excited about that. Uh, Jeremiah. Uh, Jeremiah uh, is called to be a prophet, and, and he, does, he doesn't want to go. Right? God calls him, and it finally becomes, as he puts it, a fire in his bones, words that he has to speak. Like, And, and he, Jeremiah was not looking for... The, the, what was coming, that God, what was God was calling him to do. Uh, Jonah, like, Jonah's a classic example. He wants to, God calls him to go that way, and he runs that way as fast and as far as he can. Uh, he, he doesn't, he, he doesn't see what God is calling him as the thing that he, he should be doing. Uh, Peter, like, Peter the disciple, while Jesus, while uh, he is actively following Jesus as one of the twelve disciples, Peter is the one who, like, if, if there's something really awkward and wrong to say, Peter does a good job of finding it every single time. And uh, and then after the crucifixion, after the resurrection, Peter's the one who, uh, he's not, God's not done with him. God keeps on having Peter be the one who keeps on talking and he grows into it. And so that by the time it is time to start the church, the boldness of Peter to talk no matter what turns into something that uh, founds the church at Jerusalem. He speaks up uh, it, and when the church is beginning. If you look, uh, read through the first chapters of Acts, Peter is essential. I look at Paul. Paul, um, when we first find Paul, he is holding the coats of the people who were stoning Stephen, the, one, the first uh, Christian martyr. And uh, God doesn't, God, God's not done with him, right? God says, oh, I have something for you to do. And calls him, and then he goes up, ends up going out and starting churches. And so, throughout Scripture, um, 
we, we get more or less of the story of individuals in Scripture. We get quite a bit of the story of Abr Abram and how Abram becomes Abraham. Um, but this is this repeated theme. There, God is working with people who uh, might think that they're done, who might think that they're ready, who might think they're they're just fine how they are, and God calls them to what's next. And uh, very rarely are, are they do they see that coming. And uh, it's pretty consistent that they uh, not exactly excited about it. But then I mean, that's they follow and and then and, and things do end up working out. So I was um, reading through Abram and like I I know this trend. Like I know this trend in Scripture. Like it is it's how people respond to God's call. It's like oh no, nah, I'm not. Are you sure about that, God? No, nope, not me. I, like, I know how that works in Scripture, cause I, and I know how it works in people's lives. And for some reason, going through the story of Abram um, really hit home for me this time. Like, reading through story, the story of Abram, I started thinking, that that's that's getting a little bit too close. Let, let me tell you how, how that I was experiencing this reading Abram. So, I was... Uh, Years ago, I'm wrapping up my degree in biology, and it was becoming very clear that my future was not going to be in uh, going into the lab and doing lab work. And so I followed uh, the, the calling that, that I that was experiencing. I was uh, doing something very satisfying, something very uh, powerful. I was getting up, I was reading scripture, I was reading church history before classes. Like I'd, I'd get up in the morning early, and before I'd go off to study immunology, and uh, cell biology or organic chemistry. I was getting up before I went off to study all that to study because I wanted to. And and, uh, and so I was starting to have some opportunities to teach that. And I thought, this, this is good. And so uh, I'm not going to be a lab. Uh, I'm not going to be a, a lab worker. I'm just, this is what really is satisfying. I'm going to do something. I'm going to travel. I'm going to leave the, the land of my father, so to speak, right? And I'm going to go to a land that I'm not familiar with. I left the Midwest and I went to the South and I left the field that I was familiar with, biology, science, and I went and I studied. Uh, and so I, I thought I'm going to be a scholar. Um, I, I figured it out. I'm done. I, I've gone. I went to Duke. I started studying and it was good, right? I, tra I traveled. I, I made this major step, and I started thinking like Abraham. Like Abraham has left, he's traveled, he's landed, he's done. I have left the Midwest, I have traveled, I've landed in North Carolina, I'm, I've become a biblical scholar. I'm good. This is satisfying. I've I've done the thing that God has called me to do. Great. Except I wasn't done. I distinctly remember this moment. It was about two years in. I was standing on. It was in the second floor of a used bookstore in downtown Durham. As you come up to the second floor, I was three rows back, take a left, facing west, looking up at the row of uh, biblical uh, studies. Like, I, I can tell you, I could go to exactly where I was standing, and I had this moment, right? I just remember it very clearly, okay? I had this moment, because up to this moment, I'm done. Like, I'm a scholar. I'm going to do this stuff. This studying and this in teaching for a living. This is how it's going to work. And um, I remember standing there. I was looking at these books, all the tools of the scholarly trade. And uh, I remember thinking, realizing, like kicking, sort of, ah, realizing all these words are just words on a page if they don't take life in, in people's lives. And in that moment, it's like, well... I'm not done. I thought it was going to be a scholar. I guess I'm going to be a pastor? <laughs> that was very confusing, right? In the same way, like Abr Abram, right? He travels, and, and now he has, a, now he has a never, another, another moment, never ex another experience. And okay, now he's going to have to learn to trust. A, okay, like I'm, now I, this is where I'm reading uh, Abram, and I'm, I start making these connections and I realize like Abram, he still had another big moment ahead of him, another big realization when his name changes, like and before he becomes a father. And and that doesn't happen for 25 years. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm 15 years into being a pastor. Uh, 2006 
the uh, first Sunday in July of 2006. That's when I, when I began serving a, a church. And after 15 years, uh, I'd like to say that I'm, I'd like, to, I, it would be comfortable to say I'm done. Like I've got this figured out. I know what I'm doing. <sighs> but I read the story of Abram. And I see how much he had left to grow. He had much to learn. I, I see that, I mean, Abram probably thought he was done and he just really wasn't. And he didn't know what was left and he didn't know what was in front of him and he didn't know what was going to change. But, uh, yeah, and, and I don't either. Like, that's where this is, like, striking me. And it might just be kind of the pandemic getting to me. Uh, it might be a sense of, like, there's so much that has changed in the last year and how much how much of how we do church. Like, the fact that I'm creating this video is is would have been crazy to me two years ago. But it, but I, I do think there's, for me, I'm experiencing a real sense of like, I'm not done. And I don't know what's next. I don't know what's going to change. I don't know how it's going to happen, what it's going to look like, but I'm not done. There's still things that I need to learn and things I need to grow into in the same way that Abram did. Right? And even after Abram had his big three realizations, uh, then he becomes a parent, and then it becomes a, a whole lifetime of figuring out how to raise kids. And, and I, I don't think any of us are ever done. I don't think that that really happens. And so I'm thankful as we read, as we look at the story of Abram and, and how his, the, this, the story of Abram is one long story of he's not done. God has something else for him. Um, something else to learn, something else to grow, something else to experience, a new title, a new role, a new something. Uh, it, I think it's helpful to, for me, at least, to look and realize that uh, this this takes a while. And it's okay if it takes a while. It took, by from the time we meet Abram to the time when Abram is a dad, it's 25 years. And then Abram then has to raise Isaac, and we keep on following along, like... These things take time, and that's okay. To not know uh, can be frustrating. To have a sense that we're going somewhere, not quite sure where it's going to look like, what's going to look like, and that, that's hard. But uh, we're not in any hurry. We don't need to be. This is working on God's time, not ours. Also, we don't do this alone. Like Abram traveled, and he journeyed. And he learned to trust, and he received new names. But he did it with people. He did it with his wife, Sarai, who became Sarah, princess. Um, he did it with family. He, he did it with people. And we do, we, we take this journey with people as well. You're not done. I'm not done. We're not done. God has more things left for us to do, to figure out, to grow, and to learn. But we get we get to figure it out tomorrow. To, we get to figure it out together, and we're not, it's not something we've got to figure out right this very second. We can take our time to, to discern and to learn and to pay attention and try, try to figure this out. So it's not just Abram who becomes Abraham. It's not just Andy who's becoming whatever Andy is going to become next. Uh, it's all of us. And all of us, all the people who are following Jesus, um, we're looking for what growing into what's next. We're not done. We're not complete. We're not there yet. And, and what is it that there is left for us to grow into, to learn, to do, to try? I don't know. I don't know. There are so many things that can be done. The intersection of like, what are the needs of the community we're in? And what are the skills that we bring to this moment? It, it, are, is this the moment we need? It's time to grow into being a teacher, a friend, a servant, a mentor, a coach, to be someone who prays, because I mean, a lot of us are stuck at home, right? Is it time to become really focused on praying with and for people, to study, to lead? Always good. To, I mean, always time to be, for people to step up and to lead. To be people. Is it time to write? Is it time to make peace? Is it time to do something completely different? I, I don't know. What I do know is that there are always going to be. Uh, moments and opportunities for us to find what is God planning for us to do next. Things that we just simply haven't seen yet. We haven't experienced yet because we're not, not there yet.
I read about Abram as he goes through everything along the way, and uh, it makes me nervous, I admit. It makes me nervous because it reflects my own sense of, like, growing into something that's next, because I'm not, it, it reminds me how much I'm not done, because I'm not. But it also is exciting, because it leaves me with a sense of uh, hope, we're leaning into something, we're leaning into a future that is good. And then the long run, we look at Abram, and we see that he does uh, have the thing that he values the most, the thing that he wants most. He wants to be able to have these children to pass down the family line. And, and in the end, that's where he, he lands. He, what he desires most, what God desires, lines up, and it, and it changes his life. And, and I think that's uh, true for us as well. As we're seeking uh, to fulfill our deepest desires, our God-given desires, I think we are changing into the people that God desires us to be, to work with God, to partner with God, uh, and to grow in that, because uh, we're not done. And that's exciting, because we get to see what's next. I hope you join with me in being excited for what is next. And, uh, yeah. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, you kept calling Abram, beckoning him on to the next step in your plan. May we be as attentive to how you call us, paying, paying attention to whatever way you are beckoning us. May we be as similarly bold to travel and to trust, to embrace a new name, a new role, a new way forward. And may we help others to see and to follow you as well. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you this day and always. Amen.